Speaking of other really powerful stories that you were involved with is the Aaron Hernandez trial and the whole story, the whole legal case. Can you maybe overview the big picture uh, story and legal case of Aaron Hernandez? Yeah, so Aaron, whom I miss a, a, a lot, um, so he was charged with a, a double murder in, in, in the case that I tried. And this was a unique case and one of those impossible cases, uh, in part because Aaron had already been uh, convicted of a murder. And so we had a client who was on trial for a double murder after having already been convicted of uh, a separate murder. And we had a jury pool, uh, just about all of whom uh, knew that he had been convicted of, of a murder because he was a very popular football player in Boston, uh, which is a big football town with the, with the Patriots. Uh, so, you know, so everyone knew that he was a convicted murderer and here we are uh, defending for uh, in a double murder case. Um, so that was the, that was the context. It was not a case in the sense that the, this murder had gone, gone unsolved for a couple of years. And then a nightclub bouncer, uh, said something to a cop who was working at a club, uh, that, uh, Aaron Hernandez was somehow involved in that, in that murder that happened in the theater district. That's the district where all the clubs are in Boston and where the, the homicide occurred. And once the police heard Aaron Hernandez's name, then it was, you know, they went uh, all out in order to, 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 to do this. And they found a guy named Alexander Bradley, uh, who uh, was a, a, a very significant uh, 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 a drug dealer in the uh, sort of uh, Connecticut area, uh, very, very significant, very powerful. Um, and uh, he essentially, in exchange for a deal, uh, pointed to Aaron, said, yeah, I was with Aaron, and, uh, and Aaron uh, was, the, uh, was the murderer. Uh, so that's how the case came, came to court. Okay, so that that sets the context. What was your involvement in this case, like legally, intellectually, psychologically, uh, when this particular uh, second charge of murder? So a, a friend uh, called me, uh, Jose Baez, uh, who is a defense attorney, and he uh, comes to uh, a class that I teach every year at Harvard, the Trial Advocacy Workshop, uh, as one of my um, uh, teaching faculty members. Uh, it's a class where we teach students how to try cases. Uh, so uh, Jose called me and said, hey, uh, I got a call from Massachusetts, uh, Aaron Hernandez. Uh, you want to go and, and talk to him uh, with me? Uh, so I said, sure. So we went up to the to the prison and, uh, uh, and met uh, Aaron and uh, spoke with him for two or three hours that first time. And before we left, he said he, he wanted to uh, retain us. Uh, he wanted to work with us. And, and that started the representation. What was he like uh, what would, in that time? What was he worn down by the whole process? Was there still he, he was he, a light he, in that? He, he was not. He he had. I mean, more than just a light. He was luminous almost. Uh, he had a, a radiant million dollar smile uh, whenever you walked in. Uh, my first impression, I distinctly remember, was, "Wow, this is what a professional athlete looks like." I mean, he walked in and he's just just bigger and more fit than, you know, than anyone, <laughs> yeah. you know, anywhere. And it's like, wow, this, and, you know, when you saw him on television, he looked kind of little. And I was like, so I was, remember thinking, well, what, what do those other guys look like in, in person? <laughs> um, and, um, and he's extraordinarily polite, uh, uh, young, uh, uh, I, I was, Surprised by how young uh, he he was, both in mind and uh, and body. <laughs> but cr chronologically, I was you know thinking he was in his you know in his early twenties, I believe. Uh, yeah. he was a, but there seemed to be like an innocence to him uh, in terms of just the way he saw the world. Uh, I think they, that's right. They picked that up from the from the documentary, just taking that in. I, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so there is a Netflix documentary titled Killer Inside the Mind of Aaron Hernandez. What are your thoughts on this documentary? I don't know if you got a chance to see. I, I, I did not. I have not seen it. I, I did not participate in it. I know I was in it because of uh, there was news footage uh, that, but I did not participate in it. I had not talked to Aaron about uh, about uh, press or anything uh, before he he died. Uh, my strong view is that the attorney client privilege survives death, and so I was not inclined to talk about anything that Aaron and I talked about. So I just didn't. Uh, participate and 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 I've never watched. Not it. even watch, huh? This, yeah. So, th do you, is that does that apply to most of your work? Do you try to stay away from the way the press perceives stuff? Uh, during, uh, yes, I try to stay away from it. I, I will view it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, I just hadn't gotten around to watching uh, Aaron because it's kind of it's kind of sad. Uh, yeah. So I just have, haven't watched it, but I definitely stay away from the press during trial. Uh, and, you know, there are some lawyers who watch it religiously to see what's going on. But, you know, I'm I'm confident in my years of training and so forth that and that I can uh, actively sense what's going on in the courtroom and and that I, I really don't need advice from Joe four, seven, six at Gmail, uh, you know, some random right. guy on the Internet telling me how to try cases so yeah it's just to me it's just confusing and i just i keep it out of my mind and, and, and even if you think you can ignore it just reading it will have a a little bit of an effect on your mind i, th that I think that's i think that's right over yeah. time might might uh, accumulate uh so the the do documentary but in general uh it mentioned or kind of uh emphasized and talked about aaron's sexuality or sort of they were discussing basically the idea that he was a homosexual and some of the trauma some of the suffering that he endured in his life had to do with sort of fear given the society of uh, of what his father would think of what others around him sort of especially in in uh, sport culture and football and so on so I don't know in your interaction with him was uh, do you think that maybe even leaning up to a suicide do you think his uh, struggle with coming to terms with his sexuality had a role to play in much of uh, his yeah. difficulties Well I'm not going to talk about my interactions with right. him and anything yeah, I derive yeah. from from that um but you know what I will say is that um a story broke on the on the radio uh, at, at some point uh, during the, the the trial that uh, Aaron had been in the same sex relationship with someone and some sport local sportscasters local Boston sportscasters would be really uh, mushroomed uh, the 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 story so uh, uh, he and everyone. Uh, was aware of it. Um, you'll you also may know from the court record that the uh, prosecutors floated a uh, specious theory um, for a minute, but then backed off of it. That you know that Aaron was um, that there was some sort of uh, I guess gay rage at work with him, and that might be a, a cause, a motive uh, for the killing and. Uh, luckily, they they really backed off of that. That was quite an offensive uh, claim and 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 theory. So, um, but um, to answer your question more directly, I mean, I have no idea why he he, he killed himself. It was a a surprise and a shock. Um, I was scheduled to go see him like a couple days after it happened. I mean, he was anxious uh, for uh, Jose and I to come in and do the appeal from the murder which he was convicted for. He wanted us to take over that appeal. Um, he was talking about going back to football. I mean, he said, well, you talk about this, or you, earlier you talked about the sort of innocent aspect of him. He, he said, you know, well, well, Ron, maybe not maybe not the Patriots, but, you know, I want to get back <laughs> in the league. And I was like, you know, Aaron, that's that's going to be tough, man. Uh, but, uh, but he really, you know, he really believed it. And, um, uh, and then, uh, you know, a, 
for a few days later that to happen, it was just, it was a real shock to me. Like when you look back at that, at, at his story, uh, does it make you sad? Very, very. Uh, I, I thought, uh, uh, so, so one, I, I believe he, he, he absolutely did not. Uh, commit the, the the crimes that we could, uh, acquitted him on. Uh, I think that was the right answer uh, for 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 that. Um, uh, I don't know enough about Bradley, the first case. I'm sorry to make a make an opinion on, but uh, but but in our case, uh, you know, uh, it was just he had the misfortune of having a famous name, yes. and the police department just really just 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 really got got on him there so um uh yes it, it's it's I, I miss him a lot it was very very sad surprising yeah and and i mean just on the human side of course we don't know the full story but just everything that led up to suicide uh, everything led up to uh, an incredible professional football player you know that whole story if he was uh remarkably talented athlete remarkably talented athlete and it's it has to do with all the all the possible trajectories right that we can take through life as we were talking about before and some of them lead to uh to suicide sadly enough and it's it's always tragic when you have yeah some you know somebody with uh with great potential uh, re result in in the things that happen right 